This is, among other things, it's a revenge for Kosovo. Uh, but it, Russia puts the whole of this in a wider political context, Jim, than just uh, the recovery of parts uh, of the Georgian state. Uh, Russia is looking here to uh, spread the lesson to uh, other nations around the Caucasus and in Russia's near abroad that those nations should look to Russia as the dominant power in the region, should forget any dreams of joining NATO uh, as Georgia and Ukraine have had. Russia is also resentful of the eastward spread of the European Union and of NATO uh, and of the US missile defense plan now becoming a NATO missile defense plan with batteries placed in former uh, Russian allies like Czech Republic and, and Poland. Uh, so all of those questions feed into what has happened uh, militarily in Georgia in the immediate uh, past, Jim. Well, what, is, what has been the reaction uh, of other tiny nations on the edge of Russia, uh, countries like Latvia, countries, uh, the Baltic states certainly, uh, and even Poland? Well, there are worries, of course, in countries like Latvia with a large uh, Russian population uh, that uh, any uh, invocation by the Russian population uh, in their nations that they are being oppressed or hard done by in some way uh, could lead to uh, other Russian intervention. Uh, but I think there's also a feeling uh, among the European Union leaders that uh, Mr. Saakashvili, in taking the action he did in South Ossetia at this particular time, was perhaps a little headstrong and that he'd misinterpreted the degree of support he was going to get from Western powers and from European Union powers in particular, misled perhaps by that uh, invitation at the NATO summit in Bucharest back in April when Georgia uh, wasn't given the membership action plan taking it on into NATO, which President George W. Bush wanted, but was told that yes, sooner or later, you will be a member of NATO. So I think Mr. Saakashvili thought he was going to get a lot different kind of support than he's had in this conflict, Jim.